Welcome. It is amazing to have you all back here. And once again, I have my lovely ISTJ wife, Hi Deanna, guys. again. And what we're going to talk about today is why the ISTJ is the most boring type. Okay. First of all, thanks for joining us again. We're really happy to share with you and talk with you guys. So if you like our content, click subscribe, click the notification button. That way you'll know when more videos are coming out. Okay. But the ISTJ is not the most boring type. I would like to say we're not robots. That's the one thing that bothers me. It's like when you watch the memes or whatever about the 16 personalities, the ISTJ is always the robot. Mm -hmm. It's always like the person who's kind of like mindless, mm -hmm. like AI doesn't actually use their brain. If that makes sense. Like that, I, I take issue with that. Mm -hmm. Now I will say that people have called me a machine, but that's different <laughs> than yes. a robot. People have called me a machine because I'm very productive and I'll take that as a compliment, mm -hmm. but not a robot. Yeah. You I mean, you have the extroverted thinking just like the INTJ in the second slot that has focus, it has determination, it has like a machine-like quality to other types. So they're just like, that person just no sense of humor, they just work hard and they have no nothing else besides getting something done. I don't think that that is just the ISTJ or it's just really, it's really a symptom of being a solid extroverted thinker. So yes. I mean, okay, so yeah, I'll give it as a, like an an aspect of mm -hmm. my personality, but I feel like it's blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's what memes are, right? But I, I take issue with it because it's like, I have layers. I have an actual personality. I'm not just like this boop, boop, beep, bop mm -hmm. robot. Um, and I mean, I can have fun. I can be playful. I can do all those things. I mean, granted, I like to schedule fun. I like to say at this time of this day yes. is when I'm going to go have fun. But I plan it in because I appreciate it and I know the value of having fun. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. And um, there is, I mean, you can be fun. You like to schedule many different things that like, you know, you have an eclectic taste of things that do and outdoor activities and um, different kinds of media you like to consume. So there's, yeah, to, for those that kind of classify the ISTJ in a very humorous way as like not having a sense of humor or not seeing like the fun and things or being kind of like the party pooper that is just not been my experience with um, being married to you. You're saying I'm fun. That's nice. I'm saying you can have fun. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so, okay. The other thing that I take issue with is that Whenever, like if you're even reading in a book about what is an ISTJ, they always talk about how we uphold tradition, how, you know, like whatever has been done, we will continue to do. And I understand where that comes from, but I take issue with it because it kind of implies that we go with like the rules blindly. Like we just say, okay, whatever the rules are, we're going to implement them. Um, but I don't think that's what we do. Like, I think that uh, for me personally, okay, if it's a process that works and it has worked in the past, then yes, I will uphold it. But if it's something that doesn't make sense to me, like I come into like a new company, for example, and I'm like, this is how you guys have been doing it this whole time. I don't care how long you've been doing it this way. Like we're going to improve it. We're going to fix it. We're going to optimize it. We're going to make it like more efficient. So I come in and approach things like I, I evaluate them. I give them the due diligence. Um, I think about it and mm -hmm. then I decide, like, I'm like, this is how it should be, do how, how it should be done. And it could be maintain it or it could be make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really have much more to add on that. Just that you're always looking using introverted sensing as a way of going if tradition, the way that my tradition, because it's not what society says is the way to do it. It's just like, has it worked before? Where did I see it work before? Using that memory bank of, I've seen this go terribly before. Here's how we're going to fix it. And here's what we absolutely need to do. And you will say need because you're an extrovert thinker as well. So like this is objectively how we're supposed to do this thing based on what I know. So um, yeah, I, I would say that the optimization and the um, is probably the best word to describe what the ISTJ does when they, they get involved in a project or endeavor. Efficiency. 
One thing I will say that is correct when people describe ISTJs is, you know, we are very disciplined and structured. And but for some reason, I take it as kind of like they're saying we're just like really lame and boring, you know, which is why I take issue with it. But I will agree that we are structured. And I think the reason behind it is that to, to us, discipline is freedom. Like if you give us guidelines and you say, I need you to get X, Y, Z done. And like, here, here's your map, you know, here are your boundaries. Like we're happy with that. Whereas a lot of other people, if you give them boundaries, they feel confined, they feel restricted, they hate it, they get rebellious and they like break all the rules. For us, we're like, please give us all the rules, we'll follow them. If you are very vague about something and you say, I need you to do this, but I don't really care how it's done. And like, maybe I don't know when it's due or, you know, something like that. If you're very vague to others, maybe that's freedom because they feel like they have room to be creative. To us, it's like a heart attack. Like, I don't know what you want. I don't know where to start. Why did you do this to me? You know? And so I need that path forward. Give me my constraints and then I'll be creative within those constraints. Um, and that path forward is what gives me comfort. Yeah, advice for like speaking to an ISTJ would never be, if they were going to come over to your house or they were going to arrive, you would never say something like, you know, just show up in a little bit ah. or something like, um, what does that mean? It's like, Hey, you want, like if, if, you know, if Deanna were to say something like, Hey, I'm, I'm on my way over. Do you want me to bring, you know, get anything from the store? While I'm coming over, just, you know, whatever, just get whatever you think is right is not good direction. Like they need like, do you want me to bring drinks, food, what? Because that level of the the intuitive type speaking to an SJ type is the, they're going to be confused. Like I don't have enough framework to work in to make a proper decision. And thus anxiety, what if I get the wrong thing? Too many unknowns, like. People don't realize this when they start to, when they're just dealing with normal, normal conversation. They're just like, show up, show up like between, you know, afternoon. Just whenever, afternoon. You that's, know? There's literally 12 hours between <laughs> noon and the end of the day. So like, that's, that could be any time. 12.01, 8, 8 o'clock. It's torturous, torturous for me. Mm-hmm. Like when someone is so loosey-goosey, you know, we're all just going to wake up when we want to wake up and maybe we'll meet up at the beach, you know, we'll find each other. We don't need a specific GPS location. It'll ha- no, I'm just like, I, I like can't be friends with you. Like I try really hard to relax and be less rigid, mm-hmm. but I just, it doesn't work for me. Just give me a time, give me a date mm-hmm. and I will be there, mm-hmm. you know? And, and so for me, it's like, give me those guidelines and that gives me comfort. And comfort is like a huge thing for ISTJs. Yes. For kind of two aspects, Uh, physical comfort, like I always, I don't want to be uncomfortable like in the clothes I'm wearing, for example. Mm -hmm. So I always make sure like the clothing I wear is like functional Mm -hmm. and just not really flashy. It's just comfortable, you know, so there's comfort in that sense, physical. And then there's also mental comfort, which is what you were getting at. It's like you're going to cause me so much strife if you don't give me enough guidelines. Um. So if I know what's coming and I know what to expect and a path forward, that's my mental comfort. Yeah. And just for those understand cognitive functions, like she's really talking about the, the axis of introverted sensing and extroverted intuition or S I and N E the N E part is like a mental, mental discomfort is when there's too many options, too many alternatives, too many different outcomes that either I can't foresee how it will end up or um, it's just, there's, not a framework, like I said, to work within. So giving like a broad statement, not going to help or a broad task, not going to help with SI for sensing the physical comfort part is really just like you love to feel warm, wrapped up, like swaddled like a baby because (laughs) like, but that is, that takes precedence over all else. So like even in work clothes, teaching clothes, like you're like what you're prioritized, like what is the what is the comfiest thing that I can still look good in? Like that is pretty yeah. much a priority of the ISTJ in all aspects. I'm like engineering my my outfit, right? It's like, what's the weather outside? So I'll be comfortable when I walk outside versus inside. Like I engineer all of it, you know? And when you're talking about giving me too many choices, 
So here's an example. If you're gonna say, okay, we're gonna go buy a new car. If you just said, I don't know what we're buying, we're just gonna go to the car place and there's gonna be 25 cars there <laughs> and we'll just see, we'll just pick out what we want. I will just, no, like I'm not. But if you said, hey Deanna, like I've narrowed it down to three cars and these are the reasons why these three cars are my top and let's go pick out of those three, then I feel comfortable. You know, I just can't have too many choices. So I wanna know, Joe, what do you think about how ISTJs are usually characterized? You live with one. Mm -hmm. um, what are the truths and untruths? Um, one of the truths is the sort of not understanding subtlety. And that comes across a lot in jokes that I tell. Like the worst thing you could do, the worst thing that I've seen you, I can do is to do deadpan humor or to say something in jest or um, sarcastically because it's very confusing. Like, they, the ISTJ will take you at face value because they're not introverted intuitives so or they're not used to that sort of humor. They're very confused. They're like, was that a joke? Were they, were they being mean? Was that supposed to be like, what did I miss? And then there's like anxiety over, am I supposed to laugh or not? Yeah. And I think I always describe this to people as naive, but that's not the best descriptor. It's not. But it's like, I will just believe you at face value what you just said. So the worst type of people that are around me are the people who can like lie on the spot as a joke. Like if I was like, where'd you come from? And they're like, I just flew here from Florida. When it means makes no sense. I'd be like, oh, really? Like I just, yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're like, no, that doesn't make any sense at all. But I just believe you. And so now I, it sounds super lame, but now when I'm confused and not quite sure, I literally just have to be like, are you, are you kidding? Or are you serious? <laughs> Cause I can't tell. <laughs> yeah. Another thing, and this is, I have read this in a really great comment somewhere in the MBTI community about thinking types tend to have a very non-expressive face when they're listening or when they're gathering information it can tend to look the same no matter if it's a scary crazy story or just a very bland story and i've described your face all the time as the mona lisa face where it's just like yeah and there's people are confused i, I it's overused the you know resting bitch face mm -hmm. rbf that's that's kind of overused i think that's just thinking types are not trying to portray emotion they're trying to just like thinking so their face goes slack and sometimes it's i'm like looking at you like are you do you gotta poop what are you are you are you stifling something are you happy are you sad and like it's kind of funny but it is true and i think people other feeling types might look at the ice shit istj and go like oh there's the robot well okay and not just that people think i hate them mm. like i had a lot of trouble i would say especially in college where people because i was so focused Right? I had my goal, I had my constraints, I was so focused in school that people were like, who is this girl? Like, I think she hates me. Cause like they would look at me and across the room, I'm like thinking about something else, don't care about anyone in the room around me cause I'm so focused. But like, it's like this weird animalistic thing. Like they cannot tell what my face is telling them. So they evaluate and say like, she hates me, she's unfriendly, I'm not gonna talk to her. So I have to, and then when you get to know me, you're like, oh, like, she's friendly you know i just don't i don't come across that way to other people unless they approach me and i start conversing mm -hmm. with them now one thing that one rumor that i'd like to dispel and i've ne almost never seen it brought up but you know and actually engaging with an istj and not just in the sort of meme meme averse is that istjs can be very creative because if they're developed or they start to develop their extrovert intuition they can be good brainstormers and it doesn't always come across as in the negative like catastrophizing which ne does with the istj but like i would consider myself more entrepreneurial I'm thinking of ideas but like what the istj is great for is like okay they they hear your idea and then if it's kind of along the path of progression they're they're optimizers they can say okay i, I see your idea you've seen it now here's how we make it like cohesive and then for me, because I sometimes can go, can forget about stuff that works, the ISTJ is good using their SI to keep you on track using memory. Here's what's worked for you. Pursue this. Well, okay. Two things about that. Number one, I'm it, it works for me because I'm happy that you came up with the idea. If someone told me to come up with the idea, nope. But when the idea is there, now I can be like, okay, this is how we make it more efficient and, and 
X, Y, Z. So, so I'm, it's a good compromise there. If I have someone else come with the creativity, then it's in a way I look at it as creativity of how to make it efficient or optimize. It. It's just like a different, mm -hmm. a different type of creativity. The other thing, going back to the Mona Lisa face, mm -hmm. is once I learned that I had that, and I, I don't remember who who like told me, but someone did legitimately just tell me, like, you have no emotion on your face ever. Uh, the way that I learned to develop it, right, because there's always type development, as an ISTJ, I am trying to work on acknowledging what other people are feeling and then showing it on my face. So if someone is telling me like a very distressing story and they're upset, then I try to it's kind of like a, a kind of robotic, but yeah. I try to think, okay, they are feeling sad. I should show a sad face right now. And I go, oh, you know, and it like, it kind of feels fake at first, but then you learn empathy. Yeah. Like you learn to show them and reflect them on your face and you can really improve if you acknowledge that that's a place where you can improve. Yeah, I don't know what the, you know, Dexter from the show Dexter's type was, but I feel like ISTJ would be likely to be one of his types because he he's like, I think I know that the, this person seems to be experiencing an emotion. <laughs> I will thus react accordingly. And I, it's kind of, you know, you have to be absurd, but you're right. When you go through type development, you know, hire a coach, then you realize like, oh, like I can use these tools in a way, but then I can start to actually internalize them in a way that comes across as actually being empathetic and not as a just thing I have to respond to. It's kind of like fake it till you make fake it. Fake it till you sense. make it. Like someday you will feel this truly, mm -hmm. you know, and you will want to empathize. And I, I believe that I've developed that. And one so other thing about the ISTJ is they're really actually good public speakers. Like then I have noticed you do presentations, you do pitches and being like just seeing that introvert, that I, you would think like not naturally good or not naturally comforting, comforted to be in front of people. But I think for at least an introverted type, one of the best at explaining because you always think of things in a linear format. So you're not scared of being out of order when you speak or getting jumbled in your mind. So I think that really comes across well for the ICJ and any extroverted thinking type, introverted sensing type that ESCJ, ISCJ great public speaker you'd want them to do business development or at least present to people i would also say that i'm at, like to piggyback on that i'm adaptable in the moment so like if if you throw a question at me i mean for sure i will prepare and make sure that i have mastery of the topic before i show up but if you throw a question at me i can think on my feet and answer you and just like pull from my knowledge that i have and i I feel like when there's the meme of the ISTJ, it's like they're a robot and robots can't improvise, you know? Um, and so like, I am proud to be an ISTJ. I feel like ISTJs are just so, we're hardworking, um, we're determined. Okay, I get that. But also because of that, we're dependable and loyal. Like we're really good, loyal friends. You can count on us. We will show up, we'll be there. You know, we're just, solid mm -hmm. and and like i think that's a positive thing and usually the memes make it like boring right. dependable but i think it's good fun happy dependable um and i would say we're far from boring people so i i don't know after this conversation you've seen us talk and bounce back and forth so you tell us like what do you think do you think that it's more nuanced than the memes show like do you think that istjs do have um, a personality or are we just the most boring type? Let us know. Comment below.